okay so now we will define what is meant by a principal ideal domain okay now we have seen in our lectures that in z any ideal is of the form what any ideal if you take any ideal the ideal was of the form nz and it was basically generated by what it was generated by n so this means that in the set of z in the set of integers uh, i conclude that any ideal is uh, what any ideal turns out to be a principal ideal means it is generated by a single element so this motivation gives us that if i find a ring in which any ideal turns out to be a principal ideal then that ring itself i will start calling as a principal ideal domain for that firstly i will take d to be an integral domain i'm going to first it should be an integral domain okay then i will say that d is said to be a principal ideal domain this is integral domain this is principal ideal domain okay so then this d is called as principal ideal domain if what if every ideal in d is what turns out to be a principal ideal okay so what is the best example of that that example is in front of us that example is the set of integers is pid what is the reason behind that i told you because any ideal is of of the form nz which is generated by z and therefore all ideals are principal if all ideals turn out to be principal ideal then that set itself i start calling as principal ideal domain so if i tell you that some this ring is a principal ideal domain the meaning of that will be if you pick any ideal that ideal will be generated by a single element another example is that i will take a field suppose i take a field f okay then and and if i form the polynomial ring out of it means fx okay then this fx is also a principal ideal domain right let me give you one more example any field will turn out to be a principal ideal domain the justification of these statements i will give you a little bit later okay but uh, to know what are principal ideal domains i am keeping some examples in front of you okay all these people will turn out to be the principal ideal domains now once principal ideal domain is understood there is one very important result regarding principal ideal domains that if you if you take a non zero non unit element in a principal ideal domain suppose you are working in a principal ideal domain okay now what are the examples do we have examples in front of our eyes do you see any examples yes real numbers complex numbers rational numbers because every field is principal ideal domain i have told you here in the previous page i have told you that every field is principal ideal so whatever fields i know all of them are going to turn out to be principal ideal domains right then i have what q root 2 then i have zp all these are fields then i have what i have set of integers that also we have observed integers is also a principal ideal domain then if i take the polynomial rings rx qx cx you they must be field okay it was we have the form fx okay then if i take zpx all these are examples of principal ideal domains in front of me okay then what we observed is that if you pick any element in the principal ideal domain so if x is a non zero non unit it should not be zero and it should not be a unit then x can be written as product of product of irreducible elements irreducible elements in d okay where what is d d is what d is a principal ideal domain so this is one of the 
most important theorems that you have to remember for PIDs. What is that theorem saying? This theorem, if I read it mathematically, it is trying to tell me that take a take a principal ideal domain in front of your eyes. Take any principal ideal domain. So, for example, the principal ideal domain in my mind is suppose Z. Okay, I will take a principal ideal domain which is Z. So I'm working in the set of integers. What is this theorem trying to tell me? Take any non-zero element in integers. Suppose I take four, right? So that is my X. Then this number, which is non-zero and non-unit, it means it should not be one and minus one, okay? Then that number X can always be factorized into which type of factors that number can be factorized into numbers where each factor is which type of element each factor is a irreducible element now all of you know what is meant by irreducible element 2 is irreducible in z 2 is also irreducible if i choose the number 6 6 can be written as what 2 into 3 so this number is irreducible this number is also irreducible if i choose to be the number five then five can be written as five into one right where this number is irreducible and this number the question of this doesn't arises because this is a very trivial factorization of five so five itself is irreducible so i don't need to do the factorization if the number is already irreducible how are you going to write the factorization right so five itself is irreducible so no factorization required okay if if it is a composite number then i can always write a composite number as multiplication of numbers which are irreducible means they cannot be further reduced right so this is the meaning that if you pick any element in a pid in which set in a pid then that number that element can always be factorized into the product of irreducible this theorem is true for all PIDs. Now, if I change the set Z and in, instead of set, set Z, if I start writing Rx, okay, and if I choose a polynomial, if, if any polynomial, suppose I'm writing the polynomial is x square plus 3x plus 2, okay, this is a polynomial in Rx and Rx is a PID, okay, then x square plus 3x plus 2 can be factorized as what say x plus 2 x plus 1 suppose okay so this is irreducible element this is also irreducible element so this this theorem tries to tell us that if you pick any pid amongst this particular set and if you go inside that pid and from there if you pick any non-zero element non-unit element that element can be always factorized into product of irreducible so one of the most important theorem that is uh, true for a pid so if i'm working in a pid so suppose d is a pid okay and if uh, p is an irreducible element p is which type of element p is an irreducible element in this particular uh, pid d is a pid okay so I'm draw the picture. So PID is D, okay, and I'm going to pick up an element. And what is this element? This element is is an irreducible element, and P is such that P is dividing the product of two numbers. This P number is going to is uh, such that it is dividing the product of two numbers A and B are also in the set D. Then P must always divide A or P must always divide D. So this result always holds true in a PID. This is analogous to one of the famous theorems which we know. We know that Z, which is a PID. So I'm taking D equal to Z. And what is a P? A P I'm going to choose, suppose I choose seven. And if I know that seven divides AB in integers, then by which theorem? By Euclid's lemma, we know that seven divides a or seven divides b so it is a it is analogous to this result right so this important property is shared by all pids that if you pick any irreducible element and if that irreducible element divides a into b then that irreducible element p either should divide a or it should divide b this property of irreducible elements and this property of PIDs will be very helpful for us in solving the 
upcoming problems so with this we stop here